Welcome to the very first online Fall de Brennan Prayer Day. We're so glad to have you with us. My name is Michelle and I'm the media director here at Fall de Brennan. Uh, now for most of you, you are aware of what Fall de Brennan is. Maybe you've been here or you've read about us. But for those of you who don't know, Fall de Brennan is a Christian retreat center and house of prayer in West Wales in the UK. And Fall de Brennan means sheepfold of the king in Welsh. And this is a place where people come and they get rest and they get restoration. They spend time in prayer and spend time with God. And so it really is um, a good name to capture, capture what we are. Um, the first Tuesday of every month, we host a prayer day. And so people from around the world come and join us. We meet in a physical building and we pray together and we worship together and we hear from, from God's word and just encourage each other. So obviously right now in this time of COVID, we can't do that. Um, so we thought we would bring prayer day to you. And one of, the, one of the most amazing truths is that nothing can stop prayer. And God is always with us. He can always hear us. And so we can even do it together like this, um, wherever we are. So this is the first time that we've ever done this. So please bear with us. We're new to this as well. Uh, we've actually pre-recorded all of this in advance. But if you are watching um, the premiere event uh, live online, it means that we are also watching it with you at the same time and we're participating um, in, in this as well as um, in the same way that you are. So uh, we'd love to see how many countries and regions are represented. So please feel free in the chat section just to say where you're from and uh, it would be great for us to get to know you. So we do encourage you to use that chat function. I uh, just uh, thought it would be helpful to give you kind of a layout of where we're going today. So Clive, uh, the warden here at Falder Brennan, will be sharing a few words and after that we'll have a time of worship. Um, following that, Taylor Philgate will be bringing a message for us and I'm so excited about this. Uh, Taylor actually has, he's from Canada, um, which is where I'm from originally as well, but he has a personal connection to Wales. So he lived here for a couple years and both his wife, Olivia, and his mom, Andrea, both worked at Falder Brennan. And uh, Taylor is a graduate of the pastoral leadership uh, program at, um, at Hillsong College in Australia. And while he was here in Wales, he was also a youth leader at a, at a church. And he just has such a love for Jesus and really wants the good news to reach every part of this globe. And so we're very excited to have him. Well, hello everybody. And uh, thank you for having me. As Michelle mentioned, my name is Taylor Philgate. My wife, Olivia and I, we live in Canada. Uh, the frozen place of Canada and it's actually stopped snowing now and we're, we're entering into spring which has been fantastic and uh, we spent a couple years in Wales and we love it there we love Fall de Brennan and so I'm excited to be here today and in just a moment I'm going to bring the word to you and I, I pray that God would prepare your hearts and that he would speak to you today and so lean in and get all that you can out of this in Jesus name God bless you guys I'll see you soon after Tay speaks, we'll have a time of prayer. And if there's any part of this that you miss, don't worry. Uh, you can see this. Um, you can see this video afterwards on Facebook and also on YouTube, and you can share it with your family and friends after the fact as well. So that's it for me. So I'll pass it on to Clive. Good morning, and thank you for joining us from Fowler Brennan. It might be good afternoon or good evening where you are. And we're so glad to welcome you. My name's Clive Orchard. My wife, Christina, and I are interim wardens here, have been here since uh, mid-February, and it's wonderful uh, to be here. Felder Brennan is closed, as you would expect, to guests. Uh, some of the team are coming in uh, to work. Some are on furlough, some are working from home. Uh, but it's wonderful to uh, experience the peace and the quiet as Felder Brennan has a rest and as we seek the Lord and press reset and seek to be refreshed in the Lord. We're usually here from uh, Exeter in the southwest of England, uh, so this is a bit different for us 
uh, getting used to being here. We were fortnightly commuters now since the shutdown. Uh, we're here uh, for the time being, for the duration. We're getting used to some of the wildlife. We've met baby grass snakes, escaping lambs, nesting jackdaws, a toad on our doorstep. It's all been a little adventure, but we are loving the beauty of this landscape that we're in. Some of the time I've been uh, enjoying the facilities, being able to go into the chapel here to pray. Uh, part of this lockdown period has uh, enabled us to have a little bit more time. You're probably finding the same. And I've been uh, going into the chapel with just one uh, agenda item for my praying, and that is simply just to surrender to the Lord, seeking personal renewal. We've also been uh, having midday prayers just outside here on the lawn. Uh, in the sunshine, it's been beautiful just to, just to pray with the soundtrack of the stream and the bird song uh, around us. It's a real privilege. Some of you have been sending in pictures of your prayer space, where you seek God. And uh, Alexander sent in this picture of the cross very similar to the one here at Felder Brennan, but uh, he said that if he couldn't get here, then he would build his own and he's put it in his garden and that's his prayer space, wonderful. Let me just pray now. Father, we welcome you by your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with us as across the nations we gather together to intercede for our world, for our friends, for your people as they witness in this world. Come and be with us, Lord. Be with all that happens, the word, the worship. Uh, lead us and give us that sense that you are knitting us together across the nations this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I encourage you that if you have any uh, prophetic words, scriptures that come to mind uh, during this time, or any God stories that you'd like to share, do put them on the live chat feed as we go on. It'd be wonderful to uh, see uh, what God is saying and doing during this time, and some of them we'll be able to share at the end. Sam Bennett from Aberystwyth is going to lead us in some worship. Uh, Sam leads worship at St Michael's Church there in Aberystwyth. We're really glad to have him with us, um, and thank you, Sam. Over to you. Hi guys, my name's Sam Bennett um, and it's a pleasure to be with you here today and to lead you in some worship. Um, I thought before we start it would be great just to, to read a psalm to help us focus our eyes on God. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light. must be more than this. Oh, breath of God, come breathe within. There must be more than this. Spirit of God, we Son, new we pray. Fill our son, new we pray. Consuming fire, fan into flame. A passion for your name. 
God. 
Well, hello again. And uh, I just want to take this moment to thank you for having me speak today. Uh, I really feel as though God has put a word on my heart. Before we get into it, I, I just want to say um, that there may be some background noise. We just got a new kitten and uh, he, might, he might be scratching something or meowing in the background. And there's also been a car that their alarm goes off every 10 minutes to, <laughs> during the day. So if that goes off, I apologize. We will get through this. Um, hey, and although we got to do this online, I really believe that God is, is going to move powerfully. And uh, I had a friend tell me this past week, uh, he said uh, that the world might have come to a standstill, but the Holy Spirit hasn't. And that's very true. Um, the world might have come to a standstill, but the Holy Spirit hasn't. God's still on the move. And wherever you find yourself, and whether it's in your living room or in your office or in your kitchen making breakfast or dinner, uh, God is moving powerfully. And I really pray and I hope that he would do something new in your life today as you lean in to this message. Well, hey, I, I had a word on my heart and I really feel like God is doing something amazing within the church um, in regards to this. And, and it's something that I've been practicing in my own life and have been working through with God. And it's this idea of finding the right pace, finding the right pace. So if you're taking notes, that's the title of this message, finding the right pace. And I'm going to, I'm going to read a passage of scripture from Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30. So if you have your Bibles, why don't you open up to that? I'm going to read from the NIV version. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm also going to quickly read it from the message version, and, and I, I know that the message version isn't everyone's favorite, but I think um, Eugene Peterson does a really good job of paraphrasing this verse, and so I'm going to read it. And it says this, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. It's a very beautiful passage, isn't it? Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for these amazing words and Lord, that we can come to you and that we can find our rest in you. And Lord, I thank you for these moments that we get to share, uh, even though we're not physically in person, God, and uh, we're online and we are um, together and your spirit is moving. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, change lives today Lord, that you would work in our hearts, that you would show us more of who you are and who you really are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, in this passage, Jesus is addressing uh, the people of Israel who are, um, they're burdened and they're weighed down by the externalism, the legal do's and don'ts of the Pharisees and their teachings. And, and, uh, and it's causing them to feel guilty. It's causing them to feel um, frustrated and restless and dissatisfied. And then um, Jesus comes along and Jesus, uh, he makes a very generous invitation to the Israelites. And, and he says uh, to any, all who want to experience a, a joy, a new life, a life of rest, he says to come to him. And, uh, and then Jesus um, offers this well-balanced life, this um, soul-giving life, and, and, he, and he offers it up for grabs. And I don't, I don't know um, about you, but I'm not, I'm not much of a runner. Um, I go for a run maybe three times a month, and, uh, and it's hard for me. Like, I can't run long distance, and, and so uh, maybe you can, and that's awesome. Uh, but one thing I know about runners, and especially runners who go a long distance, is that they need to have a good pace. They need to practice a good pace. 
because if they don't have a good pace, then they're they're gonna they're gonna be breathless. They're not gonna be able to go the distance. They need to have a good pace, and uh, and I feel like that's that goes for life. That goes for your life, and that goes for my life. We need to figure out okay, what's, what's my pace? How am I gonna have a good pace? And so I can um, live a, a purposeful life, a life that is full of joy and full of God, and we can go the distance. So we need to find the right pace. I would say most of us at one point in our lives, or maybe even now, um, we live a very hurried lifestyle. Um, we're, we're always on the go. We're going from one thing to the other. And, and I, I talk to many people uh, who say um, that they just can't slow down. They've tried it. They can't slow down. They can't stop because they feel like they're going to get behind. They feel like um, that, that they can't just pause in life um, because they feel unproductive. And um, I don't know if you've heard this. I hear it all the time. I've done it in my own life. When you ask somebody, how's your week going? And they say, it's busy. It's really busy. And they use this word busy as some sort of type of badge of honor to feel like they're utmost important. Have you ever, have you ever um, seen that before, or heard that before? And our world um, has this mindset uh, you always move forward and there are no limits of how fast you do it. There's no limits. You just go and you go and you go. Don't pause. You don't reflect. You win or you lose. That's how our world works. You just keep going and going. Try to get ahead. Try to make more money. A doctor and an author uh, named Stephanie Brown she writes this, she says, overscheduling and double booking have been signs of progress and belonging for two decades. Practices that used to cause embarrassment became proudly rationalized as multitasking, a new skill master. Progress equals fast, which equals success, a recipe for addiction. That's quite something, is it? Here's some um, stunning statistics from a Canadian journalist named Carl Honors. He says the average American gets 90 fewer minutes of sleep than they did a century ago. Drowsiness causes more car accidents than alcohol. Our impatience is growing. We expect people to be as fast as computers. Actress Carrie Fisher said instant gratification takes too long. Most of the 15,000 machines registered in the U.S. Patent Office in 1850 were for the acceleration of speed and saving of time and labor. We see this big time today. In the year 2000, a book was published with the title 175 Ways to Get More Done in Less Time. And tip 141 was do everything faster. Two centuries ago, the average pig took five years to reach 130 pounds. Today it hits 220 pounds in just six months and is slaughtered before it loses its baby teeth. These statistics are from 2004 and I'm sure that there's some, some new stunning statistics out there um, today that show how much we lean towards a hurried, paced life. And can I just suggest to you this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whatever time it is for you today, that there is only one pace at which we should live our lives. And that pace is a God set pace, a God set pace. When we live a God paced life, our life has a sustainable rhythm. It's sustainable and it's a rhythm. A Japanese theologian, he wrote this, our God is a three mile per hour God. Three miles per hour is the average walking speed of an adult. And you see this exemplified in Jesus as he um, is walking to do miracles. He stops and he gives his full attention to another person. Jesus exemplifies this throughout the Gospels. He wasn't in a hurry. He slowed down for people. He was, he was slow to speak and, and he was quick to listen. See, there's a cost to living life so hurried. And the cost is not living life 
with God. The cost is not living life with God and you miss out on what God is doing. Friends, we need a God-paced life. We need a God-paced life. So I guess the question is, how do we, how do we live this God-paced life? Especially in a world that is constantly on the move and is, things are getting faster and faster and we don't want to be different than where the world is going sometimes and all of our friends and our family. So how do we live this God-paced life? Well, number one, if you're taking notes, first, we need to come to Him. We need to come to God. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. See, we cannot live a God-paced life without coming to God. We can't do it. And I know that this can be difficult for some people. Um, I know in my own life, I've felt like if I screw up or I do something that I shouldn't have done, that I, I can't come to God because I feel unworthy. Or I feel like um, that, that he's not going to love me because of something that I did. So I don't know what your story has been, but friend, let me tell you that you can come to God. He gives this invitation and, and, and we got to notice what Jesus says here. He says, come to me, all you, all of you, not just some of you, not the elite, not the rich, not just the poor. He says, all, all of you who carry heavy burdens, come to me. Ephesians 2.18 says, Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. All of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit. Paul here, he's talking about the Jew and the Gentiles, and he's saying that not only the Jews have access to the Father, but all, all do through Christ, what Christ has done. We all have access to the Father. He didn't specify people, but he said all. Thank God for this. Thank God that we can all come. Because if this wasn't the case, I think we would all be kind of screwed, right? And, uh, and so maybe, maybe you're, you're like me and, and you love waking up early in the morning. And it's just like, that's your time to get up. And, and you can get up in the morning and that could be the first thing you do. You just come to God. You lay everything down and you come to Him. There's a practice that I have been doing, I've started doing um, for quite some time now, and it's just in the morning, I sit in my chair, and I don't bring any needs or any wants, and I just sit with God. I sit with Him, I come to Him, I lay everything down to Him, and I spend time with my Heavenly Father. And I look out at the, at the, the sky and see all the birds and just watch the sunrise, and it's just, just God and I. I come to Him, I come to Him. I heard a story um, once about a pastor and this pastor worked from home in his office and, and his son would come home from school and his son would take his shoes off and, and he would take his backpack off and then he would plop himself on the couch in his dad's office. And um, his dad didn't really think much of it and then uh, after a few times that he had done this, uh, his dad asked him, is there something you want to talk about that maybe you are afraid to talk about and you haven't worked up the courage to do so yet? And the son looked back at his dad and he said, no, there's, there's nothing I want to talk about. I, I just want to sit near you. I just want to be with you and near you. And I thought, what an incredible story that is. Maybe that we just need to come to our father our Heavenly Father, and we need to just sit with Him, we need to know Him, we need to hear His voice. Maybe that's something that you need to, to do in your own life. And it could be a practice in the morning, maybe it's the evening for you, but I encourage you to come to the Father, come to God. This is an invitation for us, so go to Him. Number two, uh, second, to live a God-paced life, we need to enter into his rest. We need to enter into his rest. Jesus mentions rest twice in this passage. And I will give you rest, he says, and you will find rest for your souls. God gives rest to us. The rest is, it's, it's already there. We enter into this already existing rest that Jesus purchased for us. 
Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? We get to enter into this already existing rest that Jesus purchased for us. See, Jesus knows how important it is to rest. Jesus rested. He went off. He rested. He um, prayed to his Father, uh, and he sent his disciples off to go and rest. Um, we even have accounts of Jesus sitting in a boat, and he's sleeping during a storm. Um, and that's some physical rest that Jesus was getting. We need rest from all the pressures in this life. We need to rest. Um, there's, there's so much coming at us. We're being bombarded on a daily basis, and it, and it makes us weary. And we need to rest from that. I love what the message version says. It says you will recover your life. You'll recover your life when you enter into that rest. You will recover your life. It's, it's a God-paced life within that rest. See, the opposite of rest is restless. It's restless, which means unquiet, uneasy. Um, the mind or the heart is uneasy. And, uh, and that's restless. I don't know, have you felt restless recently? I know there's moments where I feel restless. And the God-paced life does not include restlessness. It does not include restlessness. The God-paced life includes rest. It includes rest. Look at, oh, we're gonna have a look at Genesis 4. Um, I'm going to read from the NIV again, Genesis 4, it says this, um, this is after uh, Cain had, had killed his brother Abel, and, uh, and, and it says, the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. See, I'm not going to read the whole story. You can go and read that in Genesis. But uh, Cain, who killed his brother Abel, um, this was a sin. This was something that he did out of a sinful nature. And he was cursed after that. There was a curse that said, you're going to be a restless wanderer. God did not intend us to be restless. He didn't intend us to be restless. He intended for us to have a restful soul. So the result of this sin that Cain committed, this murder that he committed, he had now had a restless heart, a restless soul, and he was going to wander the earth that way. There's a reason why Jesus finds it necessary to talk about the Sabbath, to talk about the practice of Sabbath. And he, he taught on this topic many times throughout the Gospels. And uh, I love um, what this author says. His name is Stephen Smith. He says this, Sabbath is a reminder every seven days that through resting, ceasing, and unyoking ourselves from the world and work, we gain something that cannot be gained by working harder. Sabbath is the practice of being available to God and becoming unavailable to the world. It is essential that we enter into His life and experience His rest for our souls. So maybe for you, it's, it's starting a Sabbath. My wife and I are starting Sabbath is on, on, on a Sunday. We're going to uh, make it our, just our chill day with God. We're going to read. Um, we're going to eat good food. And maybe that's something for you. And, and if it doesn't allow that for you with kids and all that, maybe just take a few hours on a Saturday morning uh, to rest and be with God. Jesus wants the restless soul to find rest in him. And the third thing to live a God-paced life is we need to take his yoke upon us. We need to take his yoke upon us, or in the message version, walk with him and work with him. Um, for those of you that don't know what a yoke is, it's not talking about an egg yolk. 
um, but a yoke is a heavy wooden harness that would be attached to an ox or an oxen, and then it would be attached to a carriage or something that it would be pulling. And um, here in, in Matthew 11, the yoke refers to the Christ life, embracing his system and obeying his teaching. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Jesus is addressing the people of Israel who have been burdened and weighed down by all these teachings of the religious uh, teachers of the law and the Pharisees. And uh, they've been hit with all these do's and don'ts and this legalistic teaching. And, uh, and all the different teachers of the law, they would have uh, followers who would listen to them and they would... Uh, they would um, look at their teaching and they would uh, practice it and they would uh, do what their teacher has said and that was considered being yoked to that rabbi or yoked to that teacher and so this is what's happening here is Jesus is saying to uh, the Israelites well actually here you can have a an easy yoke you can have an easy teaching that's not hard on you it's not going to burden you it's not going to weigh you down like the teachings that you've heard from other rabbis. And, uh, and so uh, Jesus offers this, this, this new teaching to people, and it must have been so refreshing for them. It must have been so refreshing. Light burdens, and it's not heavy on them. It's an ease of heart. See, only by entering into God's pace of life do we experience this offer from Jesus, only by entering into God's pace of life. See, it's, it's, it's a call to walk with Him. It's adjusting the rhythm of our lives to the rhythm of His. It's never the other way around. It's never the other way around. And in a more literal way, uh, with this yoke, uh, I found so fascinating was that if a yoke is attached to an ox or an oxen and then a carriage, uh, one can't go faster than the other. They have to go and travel together at the same speed. And that's like with Jesus, when we enter into his life and we take on his yoke and his teaching, we can't get ahead, we go with him. We do life with him. It's at the same pace, it's a God-paced life. If you are not living a God-paced life, you have not fully taken His yoke upon you. So what pace of life will you choose? What, do, what will you choose today? What's going to be your pace? A hurried life, wearing out and being burdened, or stepping into a God-paced life where you find rest for your souls? I want you to just take a moment after this message to really sit. I want you to sit with God and I want you to, to come to Him and find real rest in Him. And I want you to reflect on this and just see where you're at. Ask God, God, where am I at in this? Am I really taking on your yoke? Am I, am I walking with you? Am I practicing what you teach in your word? And just sit with God. And see what he does. See what he says. Believe that he is going to move powerfully in your life. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you that we can enter into your rest. God, you are good. And you have the best for us. Lord, as we quiet our souls before you and we enter into your pace of life, I pray that you would show us how to walk that your Holy Spirit would guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, God bless you. Thank you so much, Tay. And thank you, Sam, too. Let's just stay in God's presence. Let's do what Tay suggested. And just sit with God for a moment. Let's just be in his presence. Just ask ourselves, where am I with God? 
can I slow down to his pace and be at rest? Spirit of God, come now. Just help us, we pray. We receive your peace. We receive your rest. When Christina and I go on our daily walks around here, if one of us is going at a different pace, one in front of the other, we can't hear each other very well. I just sense the Lord saying, walk beside me. If you want to hear my voice clearly, walk beside me, walk at my pace. And there are others I, I sense that maybe the Lord's saying that you're restless because you're like a nervous horse. It doesn't find it easy to trust its master. You may have been hurt in the past. And if that's you, I believe the Lord says to you, come to me, take my yoke. And his yoke, as well as giving us rest, gives us belonging. He loves us. Father, we receive all that you've been saying to us just now through Tay. We receive your rest. We receive your belonging as our Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, next we're going to move into a prayer time where we pray for five themes. We're going to be interceding to see God move in a new way. We're going to hear from five people. They're each going to introduce a different topic. They're going to take a couple of minutes to do that. And then after they've done that, each time there'll be a, a couple of minutes for you, wherever you are, whether you're on your own or with others, to pray, to engage with God. And the fantastic thing is that we know that right around the world right now, we can pray in agreement at the same time. There's going to be a summary of each theme that will come up on the screen as well, just as a little reminder. So first of all, we're going to hear from Richard. My name is Richard Roberts and I'm a trustee at Father Brennan. I live in the southwest of England. And I'm just going to ask you now that you would uh, join us as we pray together for our government. When I say our government, of course, if you're from another country other than the UK, then you will have your own government to pray for. But the principles are the same. We pray for our government because that's what the Lord asks us to do. And we pray for our government, not because we necessarily agree with all that they do, but because we want the best for our land. So how should we pray? Three things. One, pray that our governments get the good advice that they need. It's not always easy to get good advice. There are a thousand voices they need to listen to the people who know what they're talking about. So let's pray that the right voices get through to them. Secondly, let's ask that they have wisdom, wisdom beyond their own wisdom in how to respond to the current coronavirus outbreak, wisdom in which measures to introduce, wisdom in how to communicate to people what they need to do, and thirdly, let's pray that they develop a good exit strategy so that the coronavirus outbreak doesn't just mushroom again and peak again. So those three things, good advice, wisdom in how to respond and an exit strategy. Thank you for praying.
my name is Lynn Lewis and I live in Abraeron in West Wales. Thank you for joining us in prayer. I would love you to join us in prayer for those who are living in poverty and who are affected by the coronavirus. We know that God asks us to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves and who have no voice in the world. He asks us to defend the rights of the poor and needy. And for those living in poverty, life is already challenging and the coronavirus adds further pressure, fragility and uncertainty. So let's pray that aid agencies would manage to get food and basic essentials through to those who are vulnerable and needy and for improved hygiene on both a personal level and a community level. Secondly, please pray that hospitals would be equipped with crucial medical equipment and a, a sufficient number of essential medical workers to support and treat those who are ill with COVID-19. And thirdly, please pray that God would contain and indeed eradicate the spread of the virus in poverty-stricken areas and that Jesus would be a shield of protection over those places and those people. So that's three things to pray for, the practical response, the medical response, and the containing and ultimate eradication of the virus. Hi, I'm Anna and we're going to spend a few moments now praying for our key workers. So we have quite a lot of key workers, the NHS staff, social care workers, people working in schools, nurseries, police officers, firefighters, people working in our shops, delivery drivers, and prisons. I'm sure you could add to that list. So we're going to spend a few moments praying four things um, for these. So the first one is for protection, um, not only for our key workers, but also for their families, that they might be kept safe at this time. And the second thing we're going to pray for is for wisdom. I mean, many have to make so many decisions um, and obviously those have a lot of consequences. So let's pray for wisdom for our key workers in every sphere that they would have the mind of Christ. And thirdly, let's pray for strength. For some of us, it's a time when the load is much lighter, but for our key workers, it can be a very stressful time, very demanding, and much strength is needed. So let's pray that our workers are strengthened in this time. And finally, let's pray that for our key workers, for those that don't already know God, that they would meet with God in this time, that he would be revealed to them. So let's pray.
My name is Gary Gibbs and I'm the National Director for Evangelism and Church Planting for the Ealing Pentecostal Churches in the UK. Our prayer topic right now is the people of God and mission. So let me offer you three particular areas into which we can pray. The first is this, in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus says to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. 2,000 years later, nothing has changed. There are people everywhere in need of salvation. The challenge, as always, is for workers in the harvest field. So let's be praying that the Lord would send us out, send us out into the harvest field, and that more and more believers would recognize themselves as, as workers and laborers in the harvest field. The second area for prayer is this. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says... Uh, Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So whether that's individual believers uh, showing by their their caring actions and their good works to their neighbours and friends and family uh, that they belong to Jesus or whether it's the local church not retreating back into itself and, and settling for some secure place but continuing to serve in a Christ-like way, their their communities, that's so important, uh, particularly at this time, that we let our lights shine. Pray that that would be the case and we wouldn't hide that light under a bushel, as the old versions of the Bible would put it. Colossians chapter 4, Paul prays for an open door uh, for the message. And we need to be praying for open doors into people's hearts, uh, for the gospel to be seeded out into so many lives. People are are asking the big questions right now. What is life really all about? Is there any any answers? Is there any meaning, any purpose? And we know that the gospel, the good news of Jesus gives gives those answers. So let's be praying for open doors into people's hearts and opportunities to share that good news with those around us. Hi, my name's Anne Deliza. I work full-time with a team at Felder Brennan and I lead a ministry called Local Houses of Prayer. I don't know about you, but when we came into 2020, I had this strong sense that we were on the brink of an unprecedented move of God and that hasn't shifted from my heart or my spirit, but it's nevertheless been challenged in these challenging times. And I just wonder if I could bring three verses to us to centre our prayers. Um, And the first one is um, from Ezekiel 37 and it's verse 11. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. I don't know about you, but I have a strong sense that God is raising up an army of ordinary people across the nation. But in this verse, we see the challenge that Israel faced. They were dry, the bones were dry, they were cut off from each other, and they were lost. So I wonder if we can pick up on those three different areas in this season, that we would come into times of deep refreshing, that we would be connected in new ways and in fresh ways, and that we would be a people of hope in this time of reset. Secondly, I just want to bring to you um, Habakkuk 3, 2. Lord, revive your works. I've heard the great things that you've done in the past, that you you would do it again and do it in my day. And as we think of all spheres of influence, of, of the arts, of education, of business, of healthcare, of family, of the church, Uh, I just 
want to ask us to just pray that God would revive his works in all of these areas, that we would come into not just a time of revival, but of deep reformation. He's done it before. And I have a great sense he's on the brink of doing it again. And finally, I just want to bless you all now in Jesus' name. And I'm going to use Isaiah 60. I bless you now in Jesus' name that you may arise and shine. That even this season where deep darkness looks as though it's covering the earth, I bless you to arise and shine and take your place and be a blessing to your community. In Jesus' name. Amen. My name's Simon. I'm part of the team here at Fold Brennan. And um, I'm bringing the sad news today uh, that Roger Every has gone to be with the Lord. Uh, many of you will know Roger and Tish, who were part of the team here at Fold Brennan for many years. And many of you will have experienced what a wonderful blessing Roger was, uh, with um, his love and his grace reaching out to people that, um, that came to visit here. And so I'd like to lift up um, <clears throat> Roger's family, that's Tish, and the rest of the family in prayer and would ask you to join me in praying for them right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Roger. Thank you, Lord, that he was such a blessing to so many people, including myself. Thank you for the way, Lord, that um, he reached out to people with your love and your grace. And I lift up Tish, Lord, to you uh, right now. And I ask her, a you, Lord, that you would just surround her with your loving arms, Lord. Fill her, Lord, with your uh, peace, Lord, at this very difficult time. And I pray that you would be her strength, Lord. May she sense your presence today in a more powerful way than she has before. We just pray that you would lift her up, Lord, and surround her, Lord, with your arms. And we lift the rest of the family to you as well. And we ask, Lord, that you would be their strength, Lord, that you would fill them with your love and your peace at this difficult time, Lord. And I just pray that you would be their ever-present help uh, as they go through this difficult time. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today. We hope this has been an encouragement to you. Um, one of the things I loved about Taylor's message is that whatever situation we find ourselves in, whether we're on the front lines with COVID-19 really busy or we're stuck at home pacing back and forth or we're stuck in bed because we're not feeling well, this peace is accessible to all of us because God wants to bring rest into the restless places of our heart. So Taylor, thank you. I know I needed to hear this message today. Um, if you have been blessed by this video or any of our resources, we would love to ask you to consider making a donation today. As you can imagine, this is not an easy time financially for treat centers. 
but we are committed to continue to uh, create resources that draw people into prayer and draw people closer to Jesus. You know, even this, even this video, um, as you can imagine, has um, costs associated with it. You know, paying for music licensing. Uh, we'd love to um, provide a love gift for uh, Taylor and Sam. And so if this is something that resonates with you and you're able, we would love to have your support. So I've included a donate link and you can do that easily there. Um, if you want to just see what these resources are and if you want to stay in touch with us, we, I, would, I would love to encourage you to sign up for our newsletter. And so I've included a link to that as well. And that'll just give, an, uh, give us a way to, um, to stay in touch with you. And we have some exciting things coming down the line. On our YouTube channel, we have a bunch of blessing videos just to encourage you in this, in this strange time. And then also in this time of COVID-19, we have made our Rhythm of Daily Prayer available as a free download in our shop. And so those are just some of the, some of the resources that we want to make available to you. Thank you, Michelle. You need to know that this prayer day has been her idea and without her incredible skills as our media director, uh, being able to do this online just would not have been possible. So we're really grateful to God for Michelle. Uh, we'd love your feedback on how this has gone for you. Uh, and if it's been helpful, uh, we'd love to explore repeating it. As we finish now, I'm going to use a prayer that's used every day at Falder Brennan. It's called the Caleb Prayer, Prayer for Revival. Let's pray. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our lands. Revive your church. Send the Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nations in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you stay online, we're going to be properly live for uh, a, few mo a few minutes uh, just to uh, catch up. We'd love to uh, share with you things that have been uh, shared on the chat feed. Uh, to let you know where people have been tuning in from. Uh, so if you're able to stay on, uh, we're going to do that. But first, I want to speak a blessing on all of us as we prepare to go our way. So I bless you in Jesus' name to receive his grace, his peace, his love. Receive it in your home with all that are there with you. I speak health over you in Jesus' name. Health for your household. Healing if you're sick. Protection and provision. I speak in Jesus' name. That for those who are in hardship financially, I speak abundance. All that you need speak protection over all that is yours. I speak grace for whatever role you are playing, whether it's as a parent, an employee, a business owner, a care worker, a volunteer, a neighbour, whatever that role is, I speak grace, God's grace for all that you're seeking to do at this time. And as you function as a priest in the kingdom of God, may you be blessed. May you be anointed and enabled and given all that you need in order to be a blessing to all those around you. I speak joy in the Holy Spirit, peace, and that you might receive revelation daily from God, from his word as you live your lives. Amen. See you in a couple of minutes. Bye for now.